Here I am, visiting a film location. Not quite by mistake, but unexpectedly. I've had three locations that appear in the 1987 film, with Mel and I marked in my Google map for some years. And now I find myself heading there. And I'm wondering why I'm doing it. A quote from the most quotable film ever made, is even a broken clock, is right twice a day. This is Bampton, a quaint village in Cumbria on the eastern edge of the Lake District. It has an old-fashioned petrol station, an old-fashioned village shop, both of which are rarities, a pub that the village has collectively bought to stop it closing, displaying a sense of community which is also dying out in the English countryside, and it even has a working phone box. Ridiculous. You hung up on me. And it's become a little shrine for the committed fans of the film. Now, thanks largely to social media, I know that I'm not alone in loving this movie. I didn't expect it to be so special for so many other people to also make their way here and to make that physical connection. A few miles south is the main location, Monty's Country Retreat. Now, I'm not going to review the movie. Really, it is in the top 100 films of all time to see if you haven't watched it, but I did wonder how the location was found. From a filming point of view, it's only a few miles from a junction on the M6, which connects directly via the M1 or the M40 to the main filming in London. And the countryside does have a kind of bleakness, despite being filmed over late summer which complements the tragic comedy of the movie. It's a film that defies conventions, to the point writer-director Bruce Robinson struggled to get filming. He was bailed out by Beatles' George Harrison, and possibly some sport with Ringo, who coughed up about half a million pounds. It is a very low-budget movie, about three million in today's money. It's a story where not much happens. They go on holiday by mistake, drink a lot, then go home. Although the original script has with Nell committing suicide at the end by pouring red wine to the barrels of a shotgun and blowing off his head whilst drinking it, which I don't think is possible given the length of a gun. The worst thing to happen to them is to be threatened by a fish. Yeah, it's a story that evidently resonates with a lot of people. For me, it reflected my life in dingy flats in the city and visits to cottages in Wales that were freezing despite it being summer, as well as the general abuse of drink and drugs and friendships. The walk up to Monty's house, which is Sledale Hall in real life, is a three-mile round trip. And do try and park your car sensibly if you come up here. You don't want to upset the farmer or ask stupid questions. I wasn't too sure what to expect, an empty ruin, a holiday home, a residency. Noticing it looked empty, I entered the courtyard to be delighted by the little message in the window. Tim Ellis, a Kent architect, had brought the ruin at auction in 2009 and has restored it. There's also a little festival and a showing of the film each year, and there's a link to that event in the description. My final location is at Hare's Water Reservoir. You have to backtrack a few miles and follow the service road to the end to find Crow Crag. I'm interested in film locations, mainly because they're in, well, interesting locations. I did take my seven-year-old son to Tunisia, primarily for a more diverse educational holiday, with lots of Roman sites, but of course we visited locations for Life of Brian, Indiana Jones and Star Wars. But as much as I'm a big fan of the movies, I don't really feel compelled to do this sort of pilgrimage. Yet on this occasion, even though I haven't really done anything beyond travel to the countryside and then go home with nothing much happening, I do feel strangely enriched. Thanks for watching. A big shout out to Rob Barkley's rendition of Bart's Air on a saxophone. What a Shed of Pal, even as a theme, is copyrighted. There's a link to his channel below. Do subscribe and check out my other videos on my channel.